Hello and welcome to this talk. I'm David Espejo. I'm based out in Colombia, South America. And I've been part of the Vibram Back community for, for quite some years. So I really appreciate the chance to, to share these topics um, at VMworld 2000 and do any tech talks. So let's get started. Um, in this session, we will talk about a little bit on distributed systems theory and why it is important for us in IT, right? So first of all, theory, right? That sounds really academic and it's really academic. So, so first of all, why? Why to bring this topic from textbooks, from academia to IT? Why it is important? Well, first reason, it's because distributed systems are all around us in the everyday systems, products, protocols that we use and consume every day. They are all around us. And um, in my experience, um, you know, the academic, this academic topic is not open for the interpre interpretation of a specific vendor. It's, uh, it's a concise, exact, precise topic that when it's, uh, when it's clear for us, and that is the main goal of this session, to try to bring light on how these topics can be found or can be traced to most of the uh, systems, protocols, and products we use on the day-to-day -day operations of an IT environment. So examples of uh, distributed systems will be, for example, DNS, you know, the distributed name and service, uh, network files and systems, uh, some network protocols like BGP or VXLAN, and even Netflix. It's a planetary scale distributed system that happens to provide the streaming services to end users, right? So they are all among us. So now if, if that is um, pretty much clear on, on the why of the importance of this topic, what is a distributed system? For most of these definitions, I will use, I will reference uh, the textbook by Professor Tannenbaum, uh, who is very famous. He, he wrote several textbooks that are used throughout computer science schools throughout the world. And, and he provided some definitions for this topic. So first of all, a distributed system, it's a collection of autonomous computing elements that appears to its user as a single system, right? So, so there's a lot there to unfold. I will try to unfold a little bit this definition examples of uh, distributed systems that operate like the textbook definition are, for example, a vSphere cluster. You have several nodes. Let's say a node in this context can be a hardware device or a software process. There will be several nodes that appears to its user as a single system. You log into the center, uh, you see a cluster. A cluster itself, it's an it's a form of or an implementation of a distributed system. For example, NSX has mo most of these services are distributed by nature, distributed by nature. So it's a collection. There are several components. And one of the principles is that each component could act or could operate independently from each other. But in the practice, uh, they will need to communicate, right? You have several components, but they will need to communicate to achieve a common goal. So the next feature, the next base feature is the single coherent system. Its users see are, are not aware of uh, the distribution of processes, services throughout many nodes and many systems. No, they will see or they will operate this as a single system. This is not the same as having a single view. Right. If, if you are thinking about the the infamous um, single pane of glass, I will dive a little deep on this in the next slide. It's it's not the same. It's just uh, the the coherency here comes by by providing the user an experience in the system that behaves exactly the way the users expect it to behave. 
no matter where it's uh, deployed, no matter how it's consumed, it will respond to user requests exactly how they expect it to answer or, or to respond, right? And uh, for me, this has a lot to do in the um, trade-off between complexity and abstractions. You know, most of the uh, promises that technology uh, do today is providing simplicity, right? Eliminating complexity. And complexity cannot be eliminated. So the formal definition for complexity is shown there in the... In the presentation, there was another professor called Herbert Simon. He provided um, a formal definition for a complex system that happens to be one made up of a large number of parts that interact in a non-simple way. So it's very similar to a distributed system. We can say that a distributed system is always complex. Right, but simplicity, it's not just uh, removing parts because the system needs all of its parts. It's just, uh, you know, hiding the, uh, the diverse components, hiding them from the users and make the system appear as a single coherent system, right? So that is the abstraction, the, the most realistic goal with a complex system. Well, so uh, let's dive a little deep on the base features. First of all, a collection of autonomous elements. Is if you have several elements, they will have a, they will need a way to communicate between each other, to exchange messages between them. And also if you have different independent components, nodes or processes, uh, more, more likely each process will have its own notion of time. There is nothing like a global clock for a distributed system. So you will need a way to provide time coordination. And uh, also, if you have several members or several nodes to form the system, you will need a way to manage membership. You can have an open group when whatever node can be part of the group and can send messages to all the members of the group, or you can have a closed group and if you have a closed group, you will need a, a way to authenticate, uh, a protocol to authenticate nodes, to accept nodes into a cluster, and once accepted, to provide authorization on uh, or trust on which part of the groups uh, it can communicate to. So the, the technical or academic definition for this problem is admission control. So it sounds very familiar to a vSphere HA cluster, which happens to have a, an admission control mechanism. So examples of these uh, requirements or these features for uh, distributed systems implemented in the day-to-day -day, um, components we use in IT, it's, for example, AMQP or, or RabbitMQ, a protocol, a messaging protocol used by some VMware products. Our NTP, the Network Time Protocol, and a, a way to provide time coordination for a distributed system. Active Directory, for example, uh, an example of an authentication protocol to accept or deny requests to join a group. Uh, single socket layer, TLS, etc. different ways to provide trust for this collection of independent elements. And the single coherent system, as I was Referring previously, it's not the same as a single system view. It's not the single pane of glass. That is a, a fair goal, but it is harder to achieve um, than just to say it. So it's the trade-off between appearance versus expected behavior. And the, the coherency here has more to do with expected behavior than with appearance, right? So. And the, the overall goal is to hide the complexity, but the most important goal is that the system behave exactly like its users have um, designed it uh, to behave. Right? When you have different components, you will need a, a, a way to provide services for these different components. That is being called middleware. And middleware provides at least uh, three functions to a distributed system. First of all, communication. 
it will provide uh, mechanisms to communicate uh, components of the distributed systems. It will provide transactions, uh, a way to manage transactions, because most of the times an application relies on different services that are distributed along uh, many nodes or components of the system. So uh, the, uh, the, the scalable way to manage that is by using uh, transactions. And uh, finally, reliability, a way to handle partial failures. If you have a system made up of different nodes, you will have to uh, face the reality, a part of the system will eventually fail. So how to hide the partial failures of the system from the users? You will need a way to handle um, rapidly the, uh, or have a, a way to tolerate failures. So you will see this in, uh, in operation in an HA or high availability event in a Vsphere cluster. It's just a way to restart automatically VMs in another node. That is a way to hide or to manage um, partial failures of the systems um, for the user. So examples of uh, middleware services are, for example, RPC, which is a highly used protocol or communication protocol used uh, in uh, Windows environments, for example. The microservices design pattern of um, today's applications relies on communication between components uh, provided by an API which happens to be kind of a middleware. And also serverless. Serverless work only with transactions, probably atomic transactions, but those are transactions provided by this, let's say, middleware layer that are necessary for a distributed system. So in summary, that's it. In my opinion, when you, um, when you gain more knowledge or, or at least study a little bit this distributed systems topic, you will get a better idea on how to design an IT environment and also it will set your expectations at the right level on how it operates. So I appreciate the chance and I hope you like this talk. Thank you for watching.